Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name's Molly and I mainly do mental health videos, but sometimes I do lifestyle videos instead. And today I am going to be talking about six signs that you might have BPD, which stands for Borderline Personality Disorder. So let's get started. Now, number one is emotional instability. Now, what I mean by that is that your moods or your emotions are extremely unstable and they can fluctuate very quickly and very intensely. So you could be on a complete high one moment and then for absolutely no reason or because of an event that has happened you can completely crash and go the complete opposite direction without much warning and very intensely. Number two which leads on from the last point is intense emotions. Now people with BPD feel emotions very intensely whether that is happiness, joy, dread, excitement, pain, anger, meaning that if somebody with BPD is upset about something, it can to them feel like the complete end of the world and it is not that they are being dramatic, it is that they physically feel emotions a lot stronger than the average person, which means that those emotions are harder to deal with. Number three is disturbed patterns of thinking. Now this can be anything from thinking of really disturbing subjects and events that could potentially happen or completely made up events in that person's mind that are distressing and disturbing to them. Bad alive pathology and also people with BPD for psychosis and it is often around the disturbing thought patterns and patterns of thinking that they've been experiencing. Number four is impulsive behaviour. Now this can be anything from impulsive harm, from gambling, any behaviour that could potentially get that person in trouble or is dangerous and because it is impulsive quite often there's no warning sign that that person is going to enter into that behaviour and there's not normally a lead up to the person presenting such behaviours. It is normally something that just can happen in a split second and often the person who's done it afterwards doesn't really understand why they did it or they will feel extreme guilt for the behaviour or action that they have participated in. Number five is having an attachment issue to a certain person. Now, this is not just like having a best friend or being in a relationship. People with BPD often have a, what some people refer to as a special person. Now, this person does not necessarily have to be a loved one or a partner. It can be any person in any setting that someone with BPD can form this attachment with. And it can be quite difficult when that person is away from the person that they have the attachment with. Their thoughts can be constantly centered around this person they will plan their day around this person they will plan their week their month around what this person's doing when they're going to see this person and it isn't something that should be feared and some people would refer to it as a behavior that sounds or looks like stalking but that is not what it is the person with bpd has just got an emotional attachment to this person that they have not meant to make but it can really impact that person's life and the relationship with the person that they have that connection with and number six is a difficulty with maintaining relationships and friendships so if you have bpd you might meet a friend or get in a relationship and it will be extremely intense very quickly from the get-go it will be intense emotions whirlwind of love and happiness and joy but then a lot of the time all that can come crashing down and it can be difficult for somebody with BPD to maintain that relationship for an extended period of time or that friendship. So they are my five symptoms of BPD that I wanted to discuss. If, so if you think what I've described today sounds like you or you are struggling with any of the topics we've touched on today, I definitely would recommend speaking to a doctor. They can look at getting you diagnosed or maybe if you need some therapy or medication and it definitely is the best thing to ask for help. I know it sometimes can be the hardest, but often getting a diagnosis is the first step to getting the treatment that you need and that you deserve. So if you've got any other questions or you've got any recommendations, please do leave them in the comments down below. This is a series that I am going to be doing on this channel. I like to keep it short and sweet. So any further questions that you might have or you want to go a bit more in depth, then feel free to get in contact with me. I'll also leave my social media account here so you can contact me on there. And I do a lot of mental health talk over there as well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you'd like to see more. And if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe. And I'd love you to join this little family that we're building here. And wherever that you are, I hope you have a lovely morning, day or night. And I'll see you again next time. Bye.